In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a three-dimensional route path using Google Earth Studio and Adobe After Effects. Starting off in your web browser, we're going to go to google.com slash mymaps and create a new map. If you don't have access to the My Maps section of Google, you'll need to create a Google account. We're going to use this tool to create a KML file, which contains the information for a particular route. In this example, we're going to go from the Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles to the Santa Monica Pier. Uh, what we've done is we've entered in the information on a particular layer, and now we're going to export that data as a KML file. A KMZ file, or Z file, is basically just a zipped version of a KML file. Now we're going to jump over to uh, Google Earth Studio uh, and enter in a new project. We're going to import that uh, KML file that we created into the project, uh, which will give us the various place markers for reference, in addition to the actual route itself. So we're going to go to Overlays and then Import KML, and I'm going to import this from my drive. Selected the file that we created, and it loaded the uh, two place markers of the Staples Center and Santa Monica Pier, as well as the route itself, which is uh, shown here as a blue line. When the uh, overlay window is open, you can double click on any of the items on the list there, and it will take you directly to them, as I did here. Uh, I'm just now going to pos position my camera for the initial shot. I'll speed up and slow down the recording as I set up the keyframes here. I'll be following the path of the uh, route so that uh, you can get good angles of the route and uh, the surrounding area. These are just my initial keyframes. I'll be going back and scrubbing through the, the project to make any final adjustments uh, or smoothing where needed. And then down here will be the final closing shot for the video. So I'm just going to scrub back and uh, make some fine tuning adjustments with regards to some speed. Uh, now making some tilt adjustments so that uh, there's some fluidity in the up and down motion uh, as well as trying to get that ferris wheel in the shot uh, throughout. Uh, I can also do some panning adjustments as well. In the graph view you can make adjustments to the handles for the keyframes and this will control the in out as well as the amount of easing between the keyframes. So I'll just fiddle here with these uh, adjustments here for just a moment. And things look pretty good there. So now let's uh, add the uh, experimental feature, which is the roll. This is going to give us a bit of an airplane effect as we bank corners. And that looks pretty good there. So about time to save. And now we're just going to add the uh, time of day feature, which uh, gives us a, a little bit more of a realistic look, uh, but also allows us to control sort of where the shadows are and uh, give us a little bit of that uh, golden sky uh, at sunset. Okay, so I'll just go back and review uh, what we've done here. We've got a couple adjustments. That's going to make a bit of a fix on this curve here in the map view. A little bit softer around the corner there. Okay, so now that we've got that uh, pretty much playing the way that we want the final video to be presented, uh, we'll go in and add a few elements which is going to make it a little bit easier for us to overlay the KML file here in a moment, which is actually done in After Effects. Um, so although we did import the KML file uh, into Earth Studio, we will not be using that in the actual render itself because it's fairly flat and fairly limited with regards to what you can do with it. In the overlay window, double click on the route. This will center 
the route in the screen as well as providing a true north at the top of the screen. Set a keyframe here. Do the same for the staple center. Double click on it and then find a position uh, where you're going to be able to see a little bit of the route as well as the actual staple center. And then we'll do one more for the pier, which is our final location. These three keyframes will not be used in the actual video itself, but will be used to help construct the KML file that we'll be bringing into After Effects. And our finish point here, we'll just uh, remove the curve on the final location of the pier, um, as it will have curved into our top overhead shot of the actual route. As you're probably aware, you cannot import a KML file into After Effects. A KML file uses a latitude and longitude to indicate locations and uh, coordinates. Whereas After Effects uses a pseudo universal transverse Mercator file or coordinate system to indicate its coordinates uh, in its world space. So we'll be converting the KML file data into an SGV file that can be used in After Effects and overlay into our After Effects project. We will, however, uh, add a couple of track points. Uh, we can use these track points within After Effects to create uh, animated place marks. You'll also help us align our path or route. So once we got those set up, uh, we will now go into our overlay and uh, hide it uh, so as to not show it in our render. Um, and we will just have a pure image render. So we'll set this up, make sure our advanced settings include the JavaScript uh, file, and we'll click Start. So I'll just uh, fast forward through here, and here we see it just finishing up. This is the output video from Google Earth Studio. So we'll save that to our computer and uh, now jump into our folder view and extract the contents of the zip file that was provided. Okay, and now we'll uh, switch over to After Effects and we're going to go File, Scripts, and Run Script File. And we will select that file from the zip folder and it will load up the uh, world coordinate system and camera. Uh, I uh, always delete the uh, text elements that are provided in this file. And we'll just uh, scrub through that video and have a look, make sure it's all there. Of course it is. And we're just going to go to the frame where we get the top-down view of the route area. We're going to jump over into Google and do a search for uh, KML to SVG. And there's this one website called GPS Visualizer which uh, will do the conversion for us. You select the file. Then we will also select uh, the SVG format and uh, get that created. Now this is a uh, free service so I would recommend uh, if you are using it that you do use the donate button and uh, make sure that the provider of this service uh, can keep it up and running. And so we now have that uh, file saved. Now, to get the path into uh, After Effects, we're just going to jump into uh, Illustrator and open up the SVG file. It does have some information in there that we don't need, so we're just going to select that path, that line there, uh, make a copy of it or cut it, and uh, just paste it onto a blank worksheet. Uh, now, the way that these files are constructed are there lines connected to lines. So we want to join them all. So we'll select all of the elements there and join them. And this will create one large line. And now we can just copy that file back into After Effects. We're going to create a new shape layer. We're going to just draw a shape with the pen tool. And then in the contents of that drawing, we're going to go to the path. Select the path and now paste 
or control V for Windows users. And now we've replaced that path with our path from Illustrator. So this is how we get the SVG into the actual file. We're going to switch it into a 3D mode and select the staple center as our target. Um, zero out some items here. Um, so we can leave the X and Y and we'll, uh, or whichever coordinate, the left and right, and we'll zero out the altitude, um, zero out our rotation, and now we're just going to increase the size and move it closely to between the two points. And you can barely see them there, but uh, they're indicated by the place markers there with the little red boxes. So we'll zoom it to size. Now because everything was north when we double clicked on the overlay uh, within Google Earth Studio and the file that is created in this SVG format is north, uh, we don't have to do any rotation. We can just size and position the path itself. So this takes a little bit of fine tuning, but you can uh, scrub through the video where we have those zoom in uh, tracks or frames and uh, make some adjustments so we can see how it overlays. Uh, move things around a little bit until it lines up with the streets. Uh, and this takes a little bit of fine tuning, but it can be done within a minute or two. And so that side looks fairly good. And then we'll check the other end. So we'll just scrub through and we're off a little bit. So let's uh, make a bit of an adjustment here. Just uh, scale it a little bit and make the adjustment to left and right. And back to our end point, see how things look there and look pretty good. Sometimes you get it and uh, sometimes it takes you a good uh, five minutes or so. But now you can see we have the overlay of the path uh, on the road system and we can pretty much manipulate it whichever way we want. So in this particular case we'll just uh, clean it up a little bit uh, and then we'll provide some animation to it as well. So I'm just uh, increasing or decreasing the altitude there just to bring it a little bit closer to the road. Now the Google Earth system obviously has altitudes and the curvature of the Earth built in uh, whereas this is a flat um, path that's laying over top. So you will see slight differences in altitude. It won't ever cross into the path because the images underneath are not three-dimensional. They're just rendered as three-dimensional. Um, but you will see when we get to the pier area that uh, there is an increase or uh, in the altitude or appearance of an increase in the altitude of the path. It's actually a decrease of the earth into the ocean. So now we'll click add and trim paths. This gives us control over the line um, and how much to animate the portion of the line that we want to display. So we're setting our uh, start point at 100% and uh, this will obviously depend on which direction you're going. So you just play with the uh, start and end points uh, to see where you're going to have none of the line showing or all of the line showing. So uh, for this we uh, set our point at the start at 100% uh, and then at the end at zero for our starts. So you can see how the line draws itself, starts to draw itself out, but it's going quite a bit quicker than we want it. So we can set some keyframes now in between to slow down the speed of the line uh, as it draws uh, in to synchronize more with the video uh, or camera angle. So we will just make a, a few adjustments along the way. Now it can get a little bit tricky to see the line as you can see here with the the path markers and the actual line underneath the uh, path markers themselves will hide the line uh, so sometimes it helps just to sort of click off the uh, path element so you can see the line go back make an adjustment click off so you can see where the adjustments being made to and there we go near to the end 
And so we'll just give that uh, a bit of a review there. Make sure everything's staying in frame, and that's that's okay. And so now we can add a little bit more dimension to it uh, by giving it uh, a bit of a drop shadow. Select the drop shadow effect and uh, drag it on there. Uh, find a good place where we can see it and give it a bit of an adjustment. There we go, that's uh, pretty much ready to render out. Now, uh, just to add a little bit of a different effect, this would be sort of more of a traditional map display, I suppose, but uh, if we wanted to go a little bit more high-tech, this is uh, Los Angeles, of course, so we'll add some glitz. I'm just making a copy of the shape layer and we'll apply a different effect to that. Uh, so first um, we're going to uh, change the size and color of our line, so make it a little bit more narrower and give it a bit of a, a white blue hue. And then we will change our shadow to give it a bit of a glow. So we'll add a few more shadows in here that will glow the color uh, of blue uh, to give it a, a blue glowing light effect. And one never seems to be enough, so we'll add another one in there. And that's looking pretty close. Let's fine tune it just a little bit. Thin the line a little bit more there. It looks a little bit nicer. Maybe somewhere in between there. And just tweaking a little bit here. Okay, good. So we'll see how that uh, appears now. Now we are using a, a bit of a thinner line, so it might get lost in some of the distant shots. See, it looks a little bit thinner there. So it give you a bit of a Tron retro look there as well. Uh, so we kind of lose the line there, so let's um, keyframe the width of the line. We'll start uh, again a little bit smaller and then get a little bit thicker as the camera moves away. And then as we get back into zooming in, uh, we'll make it back to thin again. There you go, that looks pretty good. And so for whatever your project is, whether it be uh, creating travel videos like uh, I do or uh, creating some other project, uh, I hope you find this uh, tutorial useful. If you have any questions, please uh, leave a comment. We do uh, review them regularly. As always, if you uh, like this video, please uh, give us a like or subscribe to our channel, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.